Greetings and welcome to another Lessons with Odin. This episode is rather special. This is done with, for a guest post on the Dear Darkling Gothic Fashion and Alternative blog. And they asked me to do a project for them. And so, so this is what I have come up with, this delightful bat pin. I um, namely used it for an ascot pin because I wear them and a lot of my knots are... Um, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to tie the knots very well, so I decided to try using a pin to decorate the knot and just make a little cute little accessory. So I thought making a nice cute unisex little project because anybody could wear this if they so chose. So some might remember me doing a haul on these cabochons from Leander Ornaments over on Etsy. Um, I was actually suggested to get, try these cabochons out, and I loved them so much. I'll leave links to the shop down below, as well as the Dear Darkling blog link, so you can check all that down below. And if you want to find other cool gothic-y fashion-y things, then be sure to check that out. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of tutorial. This is going to be geared towards people who have never touched a bead in their entire life. This is all done using one seed bead shape, so you should be able to get all of the things that you need at your local craft shop instead of having to go through the internet and get specialty bead shapes from wherever, uh, all over the realms on the internet and then wait for it. So you should be able to get this up and get this going right away and possibly make some holiday gifts for fellow spooky friends. So for this project, you will need... A cabochon of some form. Now, this is a 25 by 18 cabochon. This one I got from Leander Ornaments, and I will leave a link down below to where I bought these. But, you can also use this on a round-shaped cabochon, or even a nice fancy button, if you have any like vintage buttons in your collection. Uh, feel free to check out the sewing departments for anything fancy. You'll want something round that is about 20 to 22 millimeters, and something that is flat-backed so that you can glue a pin back on it. Both of these are flat-backed, so feel free to experiment. You can always tailor the original bezel uh, with different sets of beads, and I can show you how to do that when we get up to that. And as previously mentioned, you'll need a pin back of some form. Feel free to use whatever pins are available, as long as it fits on top of your cabochon piece. Just whatever you like to use. You can use the bars. This one is a tie tack, I think. Um, but yes, those should be easily accessible at a craft store. Now in the original project, I only used two colors of size 11 seed beads. But, for this project, I'm going to be using four colors, as well as silver, just to kind of show you the row progression and what row goes where to make it a little bit easier to see and follow along. So, feel free to get two colors or get four colors as well, and a silver, so that you have an easier time to figure out where you're going to be. Now, these are size 11 seed beads, which is, at craft stores, the kind of the industry standard, sort of. Um, if they aren't labeled in size 11 slash 0 is what they're commonly labeled of, they're probably going to be that size, but just whatever your average thing that you can find at the craft store is what's going to be the appropriate size. You're also going to need 10 accent beads. These could be whatever size or shape that you want. In this example, I used 3mm round glass pearls to form just a nice little interesting shape. Feel free to experiment with whatever shapes or sizes or colors that you want to use with it. And you will need five drops of some form. These are top drilled drops, meaning that the hole is right at the top of the bead so that they hang and form little fringe pieces at the bottom. You'll need five of those for the bottom row. Then you will need a beading needle. I'm using a size 10 beading needle. You can also use a size 12 as well as a beading thread. Now in the craft store, I believe the most common brand is called Beadsmith. It's on, these are usually on blue blister packages and cards. So you can find these, they're in a small spool. You're gonna look for the heaviest weight or the D weight. And I'm using black to just match and blend in with my colors of my beads, but you can use whatever you want. But in the jewelry section of craft stores, just look at the findings and look at the string materials and threads. You should find 
whatever you are looking for there. I recommend Nymo or Nylon for this since it's cheaper and a little goes a long way. I'll put some links down in the description box of the products that I'm talking about over that you can find in most common craft stores, but if not, feel free to ask a store clerk to guide you on your way. And that is all we need for this project. Without further ado, let us get started. Okay, so what I have done is I have strung a specific pattern of beads onto a yard's worth of thread onto my beading needle. I have threaded on a pattern of two of my color A beads and one silver bead all the way down until I have 18 sets. So I do two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way down. This end is my tail end, where the thread ends, and the other side is my working thread here, where I have my needle attached. What I'm going to do is go around towards my tail end and pass back through each one of these beads once more, so that when I pull them together, I form a loop, like so, and I'm just going to pass back all the way around until I meet the tail end on this side again. So we're just going to keep going all the way through. Just a little bit further until I've got all of my beads threaded through again and I've met my tail end. Now I'm going to take both my tail end and my working thread and tie an overhand knot. Which is right over left and then left over right. Now I'm going to pass my needle through so that I've gone through two of my color A's, and one silver bead. I'm doing this so that the knot hides beneath these beads here, which I'm not going to pass my needle through any longer, so we can hide the knot here instead of at the silver bead, and that because we're going to be going through the silver bead again, and we don't want the knot to interfere with that. Now, if we take our cabochon, this is generally fairly snug, for the initial band. If you think it's a little too tight, you can add more sets of these beads, but you have to add an even number. So for example, since I have 18 here, if my cabochon was a little bit bigger, I might want to add 20 sets instead of 18, and you can do that down if your cabochon is smaller as well, adding 16 instead of 18. You need an even number in order to make this weave work, so keep that in mind. And a little bigger is a lot better than a little too small. To do my next row, I'm going to switch colors of beads. So we're only going to be working with the silver beads on this bezel. What I'm going to do is add two of my color Bs, and jump over and pass through the next silver bead so that the two red beads go in between the next two silver beads. So once again, we add two seed beads, jump over, and pass through the next silver bead so that the red beads sit on top, and you're going to repeat that all the way around until you run out of silver beads and end up back here. So you add two, go through silver, add two, go through silver, all the way around. And here I am about to do my last set. I have my two red beads, and I'm going to pass through the last silver bead on the round where we meet the very first red beads that we've added. and then we will have completed our ring. Now I've switched to a new color of beads, color C, or a green set. So my thread is currently coming out of a silver bead. I'm going to do a step up to go into a new row, and what I'm going to do for that is just go up the next red size 11 seed bead so that I can move where I need to be for my next row. So I'm going to next thread on a green, a silver, and a green. I'm going to skip over the next two red seed beads and pass through the fourth one. So we're working in a set of four. We have one, two, three, four. And the four span between a silver seed bead here. So I go up through one, 
skip over two and go down number four so that these land and kind of form a pyramid shape down the piece. Next, I'm going to set up for the next stitch. All I'm going to do is pass through the next size 11 seed bead, the red one, so that I move over to the next set of four. Once again, adding green, silver, green, jump over two, then I'm going to pass through number four, and to set up for my next stitch, I'm going to also move through the next set. Like that. And now right here, I am set up for my next stitch. Add on green, silver, green. Jump over the next two beads. Then pick up the two beads after that. We're going to repeat that all the way around until we've completed the set. And here I am at my final set. I've got my three beads added. I'm coming out of my one red seed bead directly after the first set. I'm going to skip over two, and I'm going to pass through one, two. The next red is directly underneath the set of three, the very first one that we added on this row. And that will be our finished ring for that set. Now we need to step up to move to our next row. And what I'm going to do is, my thread is coming out of the lower red bead here. I'm going to jump up through the first green and then the silver bead to get to where I need to. Now in this row, we're only going to use the silver beads on this new ring. I have switched over to a new color for my next row. What I'm going to do is add three of my seed beads and jump all the way over to the next silver bead so that we bridge this gap together. Once more, we add three, jump all the way over to the center. We're going to repeat that all the way around until we've closed all of these gaps in the back. Here I am at my last stitch. I've got my three beads added. I'm coming out of a silver bead here. I'm going to want to go through the next silver bead, which is right underneath the very first stitch that we've added for this ring, all the orange beads. And once we pull that tight, we will have our back of our bezel completed. Now we need to move up so that we can finish the other side and cover the cabochon and secure it in place. So coming out of this silver bead here, I'm just going to move through diagonally to this silver bead here. So I'm going through a green and a red from that silver bead that my thread is coming out of. And then from there, we move through the silver bead that we want to get to. So I'm coming out of a silver bead now, and we're going to do the same exact thing that we did with the green row with these blue beads. So, I'm coming out of a silver, I'm going to jump up through one blue bead to begin set up for my next row. So I'm going to add one green, one silver, one green. I'm going to skip over two blue beads, then pass through number four in this gap so that those sit properly in place and bridge that gap between there. Then I'm going to set up for my next stitch by passing through the next blue bead, add on green, blue, green, skip over the two blues, then pass through number four, and pick up the next blue on the next stitch. And you repeat that all the way around until you've completed this set. And here I am at my last set. I've got my three beads added. So I'm going to jump over two of the blue beads. Pass through number four on the set. And now I need to step up for my next row. So I'm going to pass through the next blue bead jumping over that silver bead in the center, and this is right underneath 
the green beads on the outside. I'm going to kind of nestle my cabochon in the center here with the detail facing upwards, because this is the front of the bezel. You're going to have to do a little finagling and a little squeezing in order to get things fitting where they should be. The problem with seed beads is every manufacturer makes them slightly differently. So some seed beads are smaller than others, some have very uneven sizes. So if you're really struggling with finding this fitting, go back, do the whole thing again with 20 sets of beads on the initial bezel instead of 18 to see if you have a better time fitting with that. Then I'm going to finish my step up by passing through the green, the silver, the green, which is slightly different than what we did on the other side. Since I'm at a new row, I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to add two orange beads and pass through the next row of green, silver, and green so that we kind of cinch the front together. Once again, add on two orange beads, skip over until we've passed through the next green, silver, and green. So you're going to repeat that all the way around to finish the set. And as you progress and pull tight, the bezel is going to start to cinch around the edges of the bat. Finally, I am at my last row, so I've added my two orange beads, and I'm going to pass through all three of these beads, the green, silver, green, to complete this round. Now, to make sure everything is pinched tight, what I'm going to do is run my needle all the way around the green and the orange beads so that everything is cinched together, and so that we can trap the bezel without it falling out. So go ahead and just take your needle and move all the way around. At least once, but you can do it twice if you want some extra security. And that is what we end up with. Now we're going to want to add our fringe, and for that we're going to anchor it to the silver beads that are between the red and blue rows here. And you're going to want to find something generally in the center. So if these two are my center blue beads, I'm going to move over one and two so that I end up at the silver bead here. So we're using six beads, six silver beads, to anchor our fringe drops. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Mine is conveniently right by my tail, so I have kind of a landmark on that. So counting from the tail, one, two, three, four, five, six. My thread is here. I want to end up here, so I'm going to simply travel down. And my thread is coming out of a silver bead here. I'm going to go down a green bead, then down a blue bead, and finally through the center bead that I want to be. And next up, we're going to start working on our fringe. So for my very first bead, I have added six seed beads, one of my accent beads, five seed beads, my accent bead, three seed beads, one teardrop, and three seed beads. To complete my fringe, I'm going to skip over the three, drop three, and pass back through the accent bead all the way up until I've reached the last bead. I'm going to skip over that first bead, pull things through, and pull tight until my fringe drop is flush with the silver bead on the bezel. Then to anchor my fringe completely, I'm going to add one seed bead and then pass through the next silver bead on the bezel. And when I pull that tight, the fringe drop is set nicely in place. I'm going to do the same exact steps to add another piece of fringe, except I'm going to make this first segment longer so it kind of adds a nice staggered chevron effect. So I'm adding 8 seed beads, my accent 5 seed beads, accent 3, drop 3. Once again, I'm going to skip over the first 3, drop 3, and go all the way up until I've reached the very last bead, and I'm going to skip over that first bead. We're not going to include that in there. So we pull that tight. I'm holding on to my teardrop to make sure everything's nice and flush after I've pulled it. Once again, to anchor this fringe, we're going to add one seed bead and jump over and pass through the next silver bead on our bezel. And that is our second fringe drop, nicely anchored against the bezel. You're going to repeat that to add the next fringe drops along the bezel. My longest one is the next one, so I'm going to add ten seed beads 
accent bead, five accent bead, follow those steps all the way back up, skipping one, moving over to the next one. The next one, I add eight on the first strand, and the final one, I add six again. So we kind of have this arrowhead motif going on with that. Once you've got all your fringes attached, all that's left to do is to end your threads. So we're going to do what's called a half hitch knot to make sure our threads are nice and secure. And I have just finished my final fringe drop. I've passed through the silver bead, and I went along and passed more beads. I passed through two of my blue beads here. To start my knot, what I'm going to do is take my needle, pass it underneath the stitching. I'm going to pull my needle through the beadwork beneath until I find a thread bridge. Just the thread that is underneath the stitching below. I'm going to pass my needle through it until I form a loop, pass my needle through that loop, and pull tight to form a knot. Then I'm going to move around through some more beads on the bezel, and do it again. So I'm digging my needle underneath the beadwork until I catch thread and not beads, pull through until I form a loop, pass my needle through that loop, and pull tight and go down for some more beads and continue. You can add one or two more knots. A three or four knots total is good for a very secure piece. I tend to use two just because I'm very lazy and I don't want to do more. But that's it. Once you have done all of your knots that you want, you can go ahead and cut your threads. And don't forget to do it on the tail end too. However, since we have the overhand knot on the very beginning, we don't need to do as many half hitch knots to secure it in place. Also be careful and don't try accidentally pop the cabochon out of the bezel because it's really hard to get back in if you secured everything real tight. Then you will have your finished piece and you can do whatever you want with the back. Glue on a pin backing to it. I use E6000 generally, but you can use something, any strong glue will do. That can stick to metal and plastic. Something like epoxy will be great and nice and secure. And then you will be ready to give it to others or keep it for yourself. And I think that will do it for me. Let me know what you thought about this project down in the comments below, or if you have some other beading questions, feel free to join our Facebook group at Creations from Lessons with Odin. We have a lovely community there of other beaders willing to help out for beginners, and even if you are an experienced one and just want some tips and pointers or to show off your beading work, check it out down below. I'll also leave the link down below to Dear Darkling, so you can check out the other fancy articles that they have, which is really cool and a lot of fashion-y things. Uh, it's a real fun read, so I highly recommend you check that out. And be sure to like up this video and subscribe if you want to see more bullshit from me. Check out all my other shenanigans right here on YouTube. And if you want more tutorials like these, feel free to check out my Patreon page and support there for extra monthly tutorials. I write sci-fi, and I've just launched a book, so that is down on Amazon if you'd like to check that out. And I'm also delving into the world of enamel pins. If you want to take a look at my designs and help support transgender charities, feel free to look at my Indiegogo campaign. All pertinent links will be down below. Thank you all so much for joining me, and of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below, and I will see you next time.